Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the premiere performance of a new play with music by Lawrence and Lee. Right Dress, starring Gordon McRae and his guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another delightful new musical play is brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, tonight, Dorothy Warren Schultz and I are sailing into a bright new modern musical, Right Dress. Right Dress! Hold it, hold it, hold everything for a second, just so we get this straight right from the beginning. My name is McBride, Daniel L., U.S. Navy, no rating. And my name is Joe Harris, PFC, U.S. Army. Now, to be sure to remember which one of us is which, because after the show, I'm going to ask questions. Maybe the whole thing has a message. I don't know, a, a moral. You see, in the Navy, it's this way. They give you your whites. They give you your blues. They deck you out from hat to shoes. That's one thing, sailor, you just mustn't mess, because the Navy doesn't give a hoot. If you prefer a pinstripe suit So sailor beware You gotta wear the right dress In the army it's alarming When you try to look guess why you're charming While wearing your nautical skivvies it's naughty to think of your civvies. Former doctors, former lawyers, all their clothes look alike on destroyers. Adolf Manju, Alibabi, they'd both look alike olive drabby. So, Mr. Clothes Horse, just forget it. Wear spats on a ship, you'll regret it. They give you a sack, on you it looks sad. It doesn't fit, that's just too bad. That's one thing, soldier, you just mustn't mess, cause the army takes no substitutes. They wouldn't like your cowboy food. So follow convention, pay attention to right hand. Well, the whole mess began at a serviceman center in New York. I was sharing a room with a fellow I'd never seen before, a G.I. Hi. Hi. Gee, you're a lucky guy being in the Navy. Huh? Are you kidding? I was just thinking how lucky you are being in the Army. I guess the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Grass? Whoever sees grass. <laughs> hey, would you mind if I try on your hat? I always wanted to see what I'd look like as a sailor. Help yourself. Thanks. Yeah, tilt it to one side a little. The women love it that way. Dangerous. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, you're better off in the Army. Tomorrow I got a report to a new ship, and I was just getting acquainted with my old tin can. That happens in the Army, too. I just finished basic training, and I got a report to a new gopher hole. <laughs> Look, try the hat way back on the head. Makes the women really swoon. Yeah. You got a girl? Hundreds. But I haven't got a girl. I don't get you. Well, you know what I mean. There's a certain special girl every guy kind of dreams about, sort of a combination June Allison and Jane Russell. But I haven't met her yet. Will I ever find the girl in my mind? The one who is mine. Yet she might be just 
just around the corner waiting for me will I recognize a light in her eyes that no other eyes reveal or will I pass her by and never even I see it. For every guy that's looking for a gal, there's a gal looking for a guy. Yeah, it figures. You gotta keep looking for her and listening for her. I'm looking and I'm listening. perfume. Doggone it, I'd like to get just one good look at her. You will someday, Mac. Hey, you mind if I try on your whole uniform? I want to see how I'd look as a sailor. You know, maybe I'd have a better chance of meeting that girl if I were a landlubber with a few females around other than female fish. Here, take my blouse. Hey, we're just about the same size. You try my straight jacket. <laughs> You know something? Now I'm you and and you are me. <laughs> you know, I like me better as you. And quite frankly, I like you better as me. Well, that's the shortest army enlistment in history. Hey, what's going on out in the corridor? I don't know. Let's let's go see. Hey, sailor, cut that out. Oh, no punk GI is gonna tell me what to do. Hey, don't punch him. You'll get my uniform dirty. <laughs> And who asked you to stick your two cents worth in, sailor? I'm not a sailor, I... Uh, hey, break it up, you guys. Here comes the shore patrol. Hey, George, it looks like the fight's all over. Two guys out cold, one sailor, one soldier. Who won? Here's the sailor's ID card. There's McBride Daniel L. Uh, he's got shipping orders, too. He's due aboard his ship at Brooklyn Navy Yard at 0600 tomorrow morning. Well, Buster, you're going to get delivered tonight. Uh, You take his arms, George. I'll take his feet. Uh, As for you, soldier, we'll leave you for the MPs to sweep up. When I came to, there I was in a soldier suit. And my uniform had been carted away, with the other guy in it. Well, first thing I did was look in the guy's pockets. Boy, they sure give these army guys a lot of pockets. Oh, here's a wallet. Let me see. His name is Harris, Joseph E., East Liverpool, Ohio. And here's a picture. Holy Toledo. What a cookie. To Joe, love Marie. Wow. Oh, now, cut it out. Cut it out, McBride. You gotta stop thinking what you're thinking. She's Joe's girl. Yeah, but look in the mirror. You're Joe now. Hello, Joe. What do you know? <laughs> First thing I did the next morning was go down to the dock and wave goodbye to my ship. I didn't see myself on board, but I knew I was there all right. By proxy, 
and probably in the brig. The ship goes sailing down the bay. Goodbye, my buddy, goodbye. We may not meet for many a day. Goodbye, my buddy, goodbye. The far you roam across the sea, my every thought of you shall be because I'm you and you are me. Goodbye, my buddy, goodbye. The ship goes sailing down the bay. Goodbye, my buddy, goodbye. And Dan McBride is safe inside. Goodbye, my buddy, goodbye. Now, where would you go if you were suddenly Joe Harris and had a beautiful girl in East Liverpool? East Liverpool? Well, that's where I went. I sort of stood on a street corner and waited for a certain special face to pass by. And at last, I saw her. Marie? Um, I don't think I know you. Well, I'm a friend of Joe's. Oh, how is he? Oh, I miss him so much. Oh, that's great. How was he when you saw him last? Is the Army treating him well? Frankly, Marie, he's a, a little at sea. <laughs> but he's fine. Well, are you one of his buddies? Oh, Joe Harris and I are separable. We practically wear the same uniform. <laughs> well, Joe and I have always been very close, you know. Oh, Marie, I can't be a rat all my life. I beg your pardon? Look, I'm going back to camp and try to be as good a soldier as I can, for your sake and for Joe's. Oh, please don't go. Well, I don't even know your name. I... Marie, I've got to, before I completely lose my head. Goodbye. What's the matter? I don't understand. Goodbye, Marie. Wonderful song, isn't it? It's wonderful what Carmen Dragon and the boys do with it, too. They do such a smooth job of blending together all the musical parts. And how important that is. For example, I wonder if you would recognize another very popular song if Carmen Dragon played the musical parts separately, like this. First, the harmony. <laughs> it yet? Well, listen to this counter melody. Now here's the rhythm. If you're still not sure of the title, you'll be certain when we combine all the musical parts with the basic melody. Yes, it's I've been working on the railroads. And you can see that to create America's music takes the expert blending of many musical parts. Well, it's much the same with the rich symphony that is America at work. It takes all the sounds of farm and factory, mines, mills, and men to make up that symphony. Separately, no one of them is of much use to you until they are all combined with the basic melody that is transportation. For over our transportation system flow all the things we need and use at home and at work. And doing the biggest and most essential transportation job of all are America's railroads, the very lifeline of our economy. They move more tons of freight, more miles than all other forms of transportation combined. They move anything, anywhere, anytime for anybody. And do that job with an efficiency and economy no other form of transportation even approaches. What's more, the railroads spend their own money to build, maintain, and improve their highways of steel. Steel highways from which you receive full benefit every day of your life. For the railroads' steel highways are the transportation cornerstone on which is built the amazingly productive economy of our nation. <laughs> Act two 
of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, Right Dress, starring Gordon McRae as Danny McBride and Dorothy Warrenshold as Mary. Well, I checked in at the army camp and decided to be Joe Harris for a while. What a rotten soldier I was. First thing that happened was I lost our stripe. Mm Mm-hmm. Got busted from PFC to private. But why worry what happens to Joe Harris? Who's he? The gang in my outfit sang one song I sure agreed with. When the war is over, we will all enlist again. When the war is over, we will all enlist again. We will like heck. We will. We were only, only fooling. We were only, only fooling. We were only, only fooling. I wasn't expecting any mail. Oh, that perfume. Oh, dear Joe, it's been such a long time since we've heard from you. I promised you I'd let, let you, you know, know everything that happened to me. And something has. Quite suddenly, I've fallen in love. I'm not going to tell you yet who it is, but all I know is that I'm head over heels. happened to me before, and I need your advice desperately. Get a leave as, as soon as you, you can. can. I've got, got to talk to you with love, Marie. Holy Toledo. I've got to do something. There's a third guy in here someplace. Joe's out on the high seas, and he can't do anything. He's going to lose his girl. I'm going to lose his girl. i got to get back to East Liverpool. <laughs> Well, I guess you know what happened. Maybe you read about it in the newspapers. I, uh, well, borrowed an army car to get back to East Liverpool. Why did I do it? Well, did you ever see a dream walking? Well, I did. Did you ever hear a dream talking? Well, I did. Did you ever have a dream through you with will you be mine? Oh, it's so grand and it's too, too divine. Did you ever see a dream dancing? Well, I did. Did you ever see a dream romancing? Well, I do. 
did you ever find heaven right in your arms Saying I love you, I do Well, the dream that was walking And the dream that was talking And the heaven in my arms was you Well, that's why I went back to East Liverpool Hello Marie, don't do anything don't fall in love with anybody until you hear from Joe. What's wrong? Oh, you're in trouble. Yeah, you can say that again. But I don't even know your name. Joe ha No, I'm really Danny McBride. What? I just saw your name in the papers. Oh, no, I'm in trouble already? Trouble? Come on over here to the newsstand. What? Look. Entire ship saved by intrepid crewman. Daniel McBride to receive Congressional Medal of Honor. Holy Toledo! I'm a hero! Is that you? Well, yes and no. But it couldn't be you. Haven't you been at the army camp with Joe? Well, I've been with Joe, but I haven't been with Joe. <laughs> All right, soldier, stay where you are. Oh, the MP. Joe Harris, you're under arrest. Joe Harris? But this isn't Joe. This is Danny McBride. Oh, using a fake name, too. <laughs> Brother, this is going to be the juiciest court martial in history. A wall stealing a general's car, impersonating a member of the armed forces, appropriating government property. Brother! Oh, don't take him away, please. Now, look, Marie, they, they may be saying some pretty rough things about Joe, but don't you believe them. And no matter what happens... Don't blame me for falling in love with you. I'm under your spell, but how can I help it? Don't blame me. Can't you? The things you do If I can't conceal The thrill that I'm feeling Don't blame me Oh, but you're the one I'm in love with, Danny Me? Oh, no, no, no Don't you see, Marie Joe's a hero I'm just a goof-off It's better if I never see you again Oh, Please. Danny McBride or whatever your name is, get moving. Well, what happened is quite a yarn. Some dame columnist blabs in 500 newspapers that the exact same day that Daniel L. McBride was being awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor, he was also being court-martialed. So they put me on the next train, and before I knew it, I was in the corridor of the White House, just outside the president's office. Alongside Joe was an admiral, and alongside me was a general. It's a great day for the Navy, my boy. <clears throat> yes, Admiral. Your name, Daniel McBride, is going to live as long as valor is recorded. Well, not exactly my name, sir. Hold it. Hold everything. General. What's the Army doing at the White House? This is an honor the Navy is receiving. Well, Admiral, it just happens that the Navy has sneaked into the Army long enough to get itself court-martialed. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this Daniel McBride... He means me. ...happens to be a Navy man. What? Why did you give your real name? You're a hero for me. I couldn't let you get court-martialed. Let's get this straight. Which one of you two is Daniel McBride? I, I am. am. 
Well, which is the real one? Uh, Admiral, I hate to disappoint you, sir, but I'm an army man, a PFC. Uh Uh-uh. Not anymore. (laughs) We got busted. (laughs) Then what I want to know, General, is what your army privates are doing aboard our ships. Just keeping them from sinking, that's all. <laughs> ah, I knew this young hero was an army man. The army is proud of you, my boy. Uh, just a minute, General. My name is really Joe Harris. But unless you let Danny McBride go from this court-martial business, I'm not going to accept that medal from me for either the army or the navy. That's a hero's request, my boy. Who could possibly deny it? Joe, you're not only a hero, you're a great guy. Thanks, Danny. And even though I'm in love with her, you deserve the girl. Girl? What girl? This one, in your wallet. Marie. Oh, heck, that's not my girl. That's my sister. (laughs) Your sister? Well, go on in, boy. Get the Medal of Honor. Me, I'm going to get something better in East Liverpool. (laughs) The president's ready to see you, my boy. Thanks, sir. (laughs) Go on in. Mr. President, the funniest thing happened to me on my way to the White House. Welcome back, Danny. Well, tell me, Marie, how does it feel to have a brother who's a hero? Oh, I'm very proud of him. But you know, I'd just as soon be the girlfriend of an extra special, wonderful goof-off. Will I ever Ladies and gentlemen, Dorothy Warren Show will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, our thanks to Sam Edwards, Herb Butterfield, Stan Farrar, Kurt Martell, and our entire company. Right Dress was an original musical play by Lawrence and Lee, and by the way, contained an original song by Mr. Carmen Dragon called Another Day Goes By. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. See, where does our show train travel next week, Gordon? Well, we're heading for Scotland, Dottie, for the first musical version anywhere of J.M. Barry's enchanting Little Minister. Are you the minister, Gordon? Aye, and you're a bonny gypsy girl. You take the he notes. And you take the low notes. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll all have a ball in Scotland next Monday night. <laughs> all aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next week, and the premiere performance of our musical version of The Little Minister, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for The American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Tonight, Brian Sullivan stars on The Voice of Firestone on NBC.